Hey y'all, I'm here. So today I'm gonna go over how to switch from using a desktop environment to just using a window manager. Now, a couple things before we get started. So as you can see, I'm gonna be demonstrating on Linux Mint, but aside from like package names and availability, this should be pretty much the same on any other distro, and any place I think it won't be I'll make a note of. And Although I'm going to give a list of packages to install, these package choices are just choices, so if you want to try with a different window manager, different wallpaper setter, whatever, that is definitely an option. So I'm going to start up by bringing up a terminal, and for people who are in more of a hurry, I'm going to start by just typing out the entire package list before going into like what need each one fulfills. So gonna be installing CWM Sakura Fa Tint 2 X Screen Saver SXHKD, which, like, every time I think of that, I need to think of the full name Simple X Hotkey Daemon. Because otherwise, it is just a completely incomprehensible mess of consonants. Dunst. LX Polkit. And Volume Icon Ulsa. So CWM is the window manager I'm going with, and it's also the one I use on my main host install. I don't know how readable any of that NeoFetch is, but yeah, CWM is a floating window manager that I kind of like. If you want alternatives, just kind of going to bump the size up. Not necessarily that much. Okay, I can't re-shrink it. I don't know the keybind for that. But yeah, just do a search for WM or Window Manager if your Package Manager searches descriptions too. And just sort of look through what's available. So like ECWM is another floater which has nice keybinds, but at least in my experience also has weird freezes on mouse events sometimes. Spectrum is a nice tiling one inspired by DWM and Xmonad. You can see CWM here. Yeah. And as far as what a window manager does, at the bare minimum, it manages window placement and window decorations. So, like, this doesn't actually have visible borders, but the title bar, that's a window manager thing. The fact that I can grab the title bar and move it around, or... I forgot that Alt-Click does the same thing on my host, so yeah. The fact that I could just Alt-Click to move this entire VM window around. Just gonna unmaximize and remaximize that to get the placement less weird. Yeah, so stuff like that is universally handled by the window manager, and some others will include stuff like a bar, some level of keybinds, sometimes an app launcher. So yeah, depending on what window manager you go with, you might need more or fewer packages. Then Sakura is just a terminal emulator. I'm pretty sure the default 
GNOME terminal here would work fine, but installing it just to make extra sure that there's a terminal that'll be fine with just a standalone window manager. Odds are whatever desktop environment you're using, you can just stick with the terminal from that. And if you want to switch, Sakura and Alacrity are both pretty good ones. Fe is a wallpaper setter, because while sometimes you'll come across a window manager that can set the background, CWM, as far as I've figured out, is not one of those. So yeah, Fe and Nitrogen are both relatively easy wallpaper setters, and X wallpaper is generally considered a more minimal one. I mean, all it does is set the wallpaper, whereas Fe is also an image viewer, and Nitrogen brings up a window that shows you, like, all the backgrounds you can choose from. Then Tint 2 is a panel. Again, some window managers might come with their own panel. CWM doesn't. So, Tint 2 is kind of a nice one. It's lightweight, gives you a window list and a system tray, among other things. And I just generally like it with CWM, although here on my Gen 2 machine I'm using Polybar, just because I already had it installed from a previous window manager and didn't feel like switching. Then X screensaver honestly probably doesn't matter that much for a VM, but for a, an install on your physical machine, it's kind of nice to have a screen locker. So yeah, that's what that's for. And I forgot to mention alternate bars, I just realized, but Polybar is a good one, and XMOBAR is also popular, and I feel like I've heard that it can be used with window managers other than XMONAD. So yeah, no lock screen alternatives. I3 lock, or better lock screen, which is just a wrapper around I3 lock. X lock more, that those are all options as well. Then Simplex Hotkey Daemon is, as the name suggests, a hotkey daemon for X that is simple. So CWM, I'm not sure, like I haven't experimented that much with different command key bindings, so I just kind of use SXHKD for that, especially because I already had a config again from previous window managers. And this is especially nice because there are some things you take for granted with a desktop environment, like the volume and brightness keys working, that kind of require manually setting those keybinds for a more lightweight window manager. And I don't actually know of good alternatives, but there might be some. And Dunst is just a notification daemon, so whenever a program wants to send a desktop notification, like for an email client or chat program or whatever, assuming they're not just using their own weird notification system like some do. Dunst just sort of gives those a uniform look and feel. And I'm sure there are alternatives, but I haven't really looked into them. Then LX Polkit is for Polkit. Sort of manages some permissions related stuff. So, like, when you launch Gparted or try to install something from the Software Center or whatever, and 
you see the password prompt. That won't actually work without some Polkit agent. And Alex Polkit seemed to be relatively light on dependencies, so I just went with that. If you don't use software that has that graphical password prompt, there's a very real chance you can just live without this. Like, the reason I just kind of randomly chose Alex Polkit is because I don't actually use a Polkit agent for anything, so I just kind of looked for one that seemed decent. Then, volume icon is just, as the name states, a volume icon. It sits in the system tray and pretty much only makes sense for, like, tint 2 and panels without a... Honestly, even panels without a tray, you can probably just pipe something for volume. And Polybar just has its own volume widget. And also, I'm just going to do a quick search for one other category of thing I forgot about, which is screenshotting tools. Wow, that is... Fantastic. I don't know if any of these would actually work. Um, is it safe to assume that this... It, oh no, that's 100% in the repos. So yeah, just adding Scrot to the list for screenshotting. Other alternatives are... MAME, which may or may not exist. I mean, it exists, I just wasn't sure if it was in Mint's repos. And Flame Shot, which, in contrast to Scrot and MAME, which are pretty much just run it, it takes a screenshot, that's it. Flame Shot has a lot more bells and whistles to it. Yeah, so here's the package list. So just sort of... Wow, that is a beautiful default. I'm so glad it shows my password length. But yeah, so just sort of install this stuff. Yeah, I might end up installing some of those recommended things. And while this is going, a couple other categories of software worth mentioning. So like I mentioned, backlight brightness keys don't actually work until you set the keybinds yourself. So if you're on a laptop, it is a good idea to install something, like some command, that can set the brightness. So xbacklight is a pretty popular one, and light is another one that I'm not sure whether every distro has it in the repos, but it's pretty nice. It's my go-to. Then, I didn't include an app launcher because CWM has its own, but if you do need one, two pretty good ones are Dmenu and Rofi. Dmenu, rather than saying it is an app launcher, it's more accurate to say it includes an app launcher. It's a minimal scriptable menu program where Scriptable is just, you can write scripts where you pipe the options to it, then select from that set of options, and then it'll print out your selection to standard out, so you can just pipe that to something else to do stuff with it. And it provides the dmenu run command, which is the app launcher part, and 
Rofi, I don't know whether it's as scriptable, but it definitely has more features out of the box. I know it includes an app launcher and a window switcher, which, side note, CWM includes both of those too. Yeah, and Rofi definitely does other things, but I don't remember what off the top of my head. So yeah, those are options for that. Then system tray and bother including because Tint 2 has one built in. If you're using, like, I think XMOBAR doesn't come with one, and Lemon Bar for sure doesn't. Then Stallone Tray and Trayer are two that exist. I mean, a system tray is a system tray. N not much to say there. Then there's Compositor, which I definitely, like, should have included, and actually, I'm gonna search for one that I just remembered exists, or at least existed, to see if it's available. Yeah, so Compton's an option, so I'll probably just put some on-screen text where I'm giving the package list just to mention that. Tycom is what I typically use, and is the only one I specifically searched for, but... Yeah, Compositor deals with, among other things, drop shadows, like you can see around these windows if you look closely enough, and window transparency, which these aren't set up for. And I'm just gonna let Compton install, and actually while I'm at it... Gonna add... Some of the extra X screensaver stuff, just scroll back to make sure that that was right. Oh yeah, that is not the character I wanted to put in there. So yeah. That's a compositor. And as you may have guessed by me just remembering a couple while recording this, there's a very good chance that You'll need to install some extra stuff later, but these should be enough to at least get you a preliminary working setup. And then, how much longer does this have? That's probably going to be a bit. So, on this terminal, going to start doing some initial configuration. Just a couple things that are kind of nice to do before signing out and trying to sign into the new window manager. So, point your text editor of choice, text editor, point your text editor of choice to .cwmrc just directly in your home folder. Alternatively, point your second choice of editor to .cwmrc directly in your home folder. And I'm going to add two lines. The first one is more important right now, but the second is just sort of while we're in here anyway. So, command term, and then set it to Sakura, or whatever terminal you installed earlier. Because Control-Alt-Enter just launches 
whatever CWM's default terminal is. So I think if you don't configure it, it might be Xterm. So this is just saying when you hit Control Alt Enter, this is the terminal you want. And then the other special command, which is the other command we're going to set up, which is the only other like special one, is lock, which is mapped to Control Alt Delete. And for X screensaver and anything else that has necessary arguments, you're going to want to wrap this in quotes. So X screensaver command dash lock. And again, just whatever screen locker you installed before. And just sort of save and exit. And then the other thing we're going to set up is fa dash dash bg zoom and then just whatever wallpaper you want to set. I don't know for sure whether this will work right in a desktop environment, but the important part is that it'll make the .fabbg script, which is just... Oh my god. Okay, so that is... not... how this works. BG fill, that is the command I wanted. Okay, so that did actually work. Then if you do a little ls-a, you can see this new executable.fabbg, which if you look at it, it's just a little shell script that just sets the background you specified with the argument you specified, and also passing a flag that makes it not just overwrite itself every single time. So yeah, next one is going to vary slightly depending on whether you use a display manager or just sign in from the TTY. If you're using a desktop environment, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you most likely use a display manager. But if you're just signing in from the TTY, then the file you're gonna want to make is again just directly in your home folder dot rc and for display manager, it'll be called dot x session. And either way, it's going to be basically the same file, just different name. And worth noting before we get too far into this is that a lot of the stuff I'm going to throw into here could go in an auto start script instead. Like honestly, if you're using a window manager that has an auto start script, just use that, completely disregard the X session bit. You'll still probably need an X and RC if you're just using start X from the TTY, but the dot desktop file for the window manager should be fine with an auto start. Actually, if you have an auto start, just edit that instead of this, because it'll still be the same content. So, within this, the order mostly doesn't matter. The main things are if you have one program that depends on another, obviously you'll need to start the one that it depends on first. So, like, since Tint2 uses a compositor for transparency and the wallpaper for pseudo-transparency if there isn't a compositor, 
you're going to want to launch Tint 2 after the wallpaper and the compositor. So I'm going to start by just... I think it's just Compton, Ampersand... Actually, it might have dash B, yeah. And one common thing you'll see in a lot of these is that generally you'll either want some flag to background it, or you'll want to put an ampersand at the end just to tell whatever shell is executing this to background at. Because if this didn't background, it would just launch Compton, wait for Compton to exit, and as long as Compton is running, it's just not going to proceed. So yeah, Compton for the compositor, or PyCom or whatever you went with. Then I'm just going to make sure that the LXPolkit binary exists. It does. On some systems, you might need to install LX session for that. Yeah, LX pull kit, and probably best to background that. Then X screensaver backgrounding that, just so that X screensaver command can actually do something. And gonna put a commented outline to make note of if you're running a systemd based distro on a laptop xss lock is a pretty useful tool that if you start it in your startup script like this just passing it dash dash and then your lock command. It'll listen for suspend and hibernate events and launch that screen locker. And if you're not running systemd, I have a video on how to accomplish this with ACPD. Yay, self-plug. And then Here could be a good place to start simple X hotkey daemon once we have a config. But since we don't really have one yet, there isn't any point having it run yet. Then after that, Set the wallpaper with just whichever wallpaper setter you went with. That would be just tilde slash dot febg. Nitrogen, I think, is nitrogen dash dash restore. I just remembered that this doesn't actually background itself, so got to do that. And then tint 2, not just tint, or again, whatever bar you went with. Then dunst, and yeah, that is just called volume icon on here. Figured I'd check because the package name was kind of weird. See so yeah, another dependency. You gotta start volume icon after starting whatever handles the system tray. Because this is just a volume icon in the system tray. Actually, I'm not gonna install it on here, but nm applet is another good tray icon to look into. If you're using Network Manager, which last I checked 
most distributions do. That pretty much just gives you network status, and you can click and or right click it to change some network stuff. So yeah, if you're using a window manager auto start, this should be all you need for X Hessian or X init RC. You'll need one more line, which will vary slightly depending on whether you need a dbus session bus or not. If you're not sure, just try without, and if anything breaks, try with and see if that helps. So, either way, it'll start with exec and end with your window manager. And if you do need a session bus, then instead of just exec window manager, it'll be exec dbus launch dash dash exit with session and then whatever window manager. Now, I like to live on the edge, so I'm just going to try without that line. And one other important note before we save and exit this, that lack of ampersand at the end isn't an accident on my part. You actually don't want to just background this exact line. So the whole point of backgrounding is just so that it can continue through to the other commands, and this is the absolute last one, so there's nothing to continue to. Yeah, just save that and exit. And then we only need one more file, and then we'll be good to go. So we're gonna cd into slash usr slash share slash x sessions and if you do an ls you can see dot desktop files for the different sessions available i completely forgot the debian line calls it open bsdcwm Yes, yeah, so let's that's a little tweak that needs to be made. Okay, so now that the accession has the actual right name for the window manager, the easiest way to make a new desktop file for just using this X session is to just make a copy of an existing one. So I'm going to copy the CWM desktop file and just call it like default X session dot desktop. And I don't remember if I mentioned, but you do need to prefix that with sudo because you do actually need root for this. And now another thing prefixed with sudo is pointing whatever text editor to this new .desktop file. And I'm just going to change the name here to OpenBSDCWM. X session, and then exec and try exec. You're going to want to double check just to make sure that this is the right path. It's so going to check slash Etsy slash X11. And you can see this is where the X session binary is. So just change the exec to slash etsy slash x11 or whatever path you found slash x session. 
And then triexec is going to be the same. And then just save that and exit. And there will probably be on-screen text somewhere if there wasn't already. If the X session file in your home folder needs to be executable. I know the only system that I use a display manager on, I have it executable, but I'm not actually sure whether that was necessary or just a thing I did to be safe. So, I'm just gonna sign out and see if I can sign back in. So, if you're signing in from the TTY, you should be able to just start X and not do anything special. If you're using a display manager, you're going to want to click Unmint. It's this little icon right here. Just whatever display manager Mint's using. On others, you might have an icon like here or something, but just find the option to change the session. Oh, that's, that's a cool little open BSD puffer fish. Yeah, then select the X session that we just made. Type your password and time to see if this all collapses. Wow. Okay, so that did actually work. So now if you hit Control alt enter you can see that your terminal comes up and let's see, do I have NeoFetch on here? Why do I have NeoFetch on here? Yeah, so DE just detects as whatever you called that dot desktop file. WM is CWM. It's detecting the theme as mint y, which is not what I expected, but maybe that is just the default on here. And also, I didn't show memory use beforehand, but 296 megs. Check that out. So yeah, for CWM, alt question mark brings up the run prompt, and then you can just type, like, Nemo, or whatever. Okay, I don't know why it's detecting the GTK theme as Mint Y. This is definitely not Mint Y. Yeah, then Control Alt X to close the window. And yeah, that is pretty much all you need. Now you can start playing around with configuring other things, like actually setting keybinds so that you can start Simple X Hotkey Demon in your auto start, and that might be a video at some point. Yeah, for now, that is a window manager. So yeah, hopefully this helped someone, and uh, have a nice rest of your day.